Here we are, Act 3, and it's not even 8 o'clock. Yoo-hoo! <laughs> run, run, keep going. <laughs> okay. Should we go Please. to the house of Antipolis? Uh, Antipolis at Ephesus. So we have Antipolis, Ephesus, Romeo, Ephesus, Angelo, Balthazar. Okay. Balthazar. Good Signor Angelo, <clears throat> you must excuse us all. My wife is shrewish when I keep not ours. Say that I lingered with you at your shop to see the making of her cosinet, and that tomorrow you will bring it home. But here's a villain that would face me down. He met me on the mark, and that I beat him and charged him with a thousand marks in gold, and that I did deny my wife and house. Thou drunkard, thou. What didst thou mean by this? Say what you will, sir, but I know what I know, that you beat me at the mark. I have your hand to show. If the skin were parchment, and the blows you gave were ink, your own handwriting would tell you what I think. I think thou art an ass. Mary, so it doth appear, by the wrongs I suffer and the blows I bear. I should kick being kicked, and being at that pass, you would keep from my heels and beware of an ass. You're sad, Signor Balthazar. Pray God our cheer may answer my good will and your good welcome here. I hold your dainties cheap, sir, and you're welcome, dear. Oh, Senor Balthazar, either at flesh or fish, a table full of welcome makes scarce one dainty dish. Ah, oh, good meat, sir, is common, that every churl affords. And welcome more common, for that's nothing but words. <laughs> Small cheer and great welcome make her a, mer a merry feast. Aye, to a niggardly host and more sparing guest. But though my cates be mean, take them in good part. Better cheer may you have, but not with better heart. <laughs> but soft, my door is locked. Go, bid them let us in. Uh -oh. Mola, Bridget, Marion, Sicily, Killian, Jin. Mom, Mark Horse, Capon, Coxcomb, Idiot, Patch, either get thee from the door or sit down at the hatch. Doth, doth thou conjure for wenches thou, that thou callest for such store? When one is too many, go get thee from the door. What patch is made our porter? My master stays in the street. Let him walk from hence he came, lest he catch cold on his feet. Who talks within there? Oh, open the door. Right, sir, I'll tell you when, and you tell me wherefore. Wherefore? For my dinner. I have not dined today. No, today here you must not. Come again when you may. What? Art thou that keepest me out from the house I owe? The porter for this time, sir, and my name is Dromeo. Oh, villain, thou hast stolen both my office and my name. The one there got me credit, the other mickle blame. If thou hast been Dromeo today in my place, thou would have had changed thy face for a name, or thy name for an ass. What a cold is there. Romeo, who are those at the gate? Let my master in, Lucy. Faith, no, he comes too late. And so tell your master. Oh, Lord, I must laugh. Have at you with a pot proverb. Shall I sit in my staff? Have at you with another that's... When can you tell? If thy name be called Luce, Luce, Thou hast answered him well. Do you hear, you minion? You'll let us in, I hope? I thought to have asked you. And you said no. So, come, help. Well struck. There was a blow for blow. Thou baggage, let me in. Can you tell for whose sake? Master, 
knock the door hard. Let him knock till it ain't. You'll cry for this minion if I beat the door down. What needs all that and a pair of stocks in the town? Who is that at the door that keeps all this noise? By my troth, your town is troubled with unruly boys. Are you there, wife? You might have come before. Your wife's surname? Go get you from the door. Went in pain, master. This knave would go sooner. There is neither a cheer, sir, nor welcome. We would uh, fain have either. Uh, in debating which was best, we shall part with neither. They stand at the door, master. Bid them welcome hither. There is something in the wind that we cannot get in. You would say so, master, if your garments were thin. Your cake there is warm within. You stand here in the cold. It would make a man mad as a buck to be so bought and sold. Go, oh, fetch me something. I'll break up the gate. Break any breaking here, and I'll break your knave's pate. And may break a word with you, sir. And words are but wind. I am break it in your face, so he break it not behind. It seems thou wantest breaking out upon thee, kind. Here's too much out upon thee. I pray thee, let me in. I, when the fowls have no feathers and fish have no fin. Well, I'll break in. Go borrow me a crow. A crow without feather, master, mean you so? For a fish without a fin, there's a fowl without a feather. If a crow help us sin, sirrah, we'll pluck a crow together. Get thee gone. Fetch me an iron crow. Oh, have patience, sir. Oh, let it not be so. Here in your war against your reputation, and draw within a compass of the suspect of unviolated honor of your wife. Once this, your long experience of her wisdom, her sober virtue, years, and modesty, Plead on her past <laughs> some cause to you unknown. And doubt not, sir, but she will well excuse <clears throat> what at this time the doors have made against you. Be ruled by me, depart with patience, and let us to the tiger all to dinner. And about evening, come yourself alone to know the reason of this stranger's strength. If by strong hand you offer to break in, now in the stirring passage of the day, a vulgar comment will be made of it, and that's supposed by the common rout against your yet ungalled estimation that may with foul intrusion enter in and dwell upon your grave when you are dead for slander lives upon succession uh, forever house where it uh, gets possession. You have prevailed. I will depart in quiet, and in despite of mirth, mean to be merry. I know a wench of excellent discourse, pretty and witty, wild, and yet too gentle. There will we dine, this woman that I mean, my wife, but I protest without desert, hath oft times upbraided me with all. To her we will to dinner. Get you home, and fetch the chain, by this I know it is made. Bring it, I pray you, to the porpentine, for there's the house. That chain will I bestow, be it for nothing but to spite my wife, upon mine hostess there. Good sir, uh, make haste, since mine own doors refuse to entertain me, I'll knock elsewhere to see if they'll disdain me. Meet you at the place, some hour hence. Do so. This jest shall cost me some expense. Mm. Mm. And may it be that you have quiet forgot. A husband's office shall antipolis. Even in the spring of love, thy love springs not rot. Shall love in building grow so ruin it? If you did wed my sister for her wealth, then for her wealth's sake, use her with more kindness. Or if you like elsewhere, do it by stealth. Muffle your false love with some show of blindness. Let not my sister read it in your eye. Be not thy tongue 
Thy own shame's orator, look we speak fair, become disloyalty, a peril vice like virtue's harbinger. Bear a fair presence, though your heart be tamed. Teach sin the carriage of holy saint. Be secret false. What needs she be acquainted? What simple thief brags of his own attain? Tis double wrong to taunt with your bed, and let her be readed in thy looks at broad. Shame hath a bastard fame, well managed, all deeds it doubled with an evil word. Alas, poor women, make us but believe, being compact of credit that you love us, though others have the arm, show us the sleeve. We in your motion turn, and you may move us, then gentle brother, get you in again. Comfort my sister, cheer her, call her wife. Tis holy sport to be a little vain when the sweet breath of flattery conquers strife. Sweet mistress, what your name is else? I know not, nor by what wonder you do hit of mine. Less than your knowledge and your grace you show not than our earth's wonder more than earth divine. Teach me, dear creature, how to think and speak, lay open to my earthly gross conceit, smothered in errors, feeble, shallow, weak, the folded meaning of your words deceit. Against my soul's pure truth, why labor you to make it wander in an unknown field? Are you a god? Would you create me new? Transform me then, and to your power I'll yield. But if that I am I, then well I know your weeping sister is no wife of mine, nor to her bed do no homage do I owe. Far more, far more to you do I decline. Oh, train me not, sweet mermaid, with thy note to drown me in thy sister's flood of tears. Sing, siren, for thyself, and I will dote, spread all the silver waves thy golden hairs, and as a bed I'll take them and lie there. And in that glorious supposition, think he gains by death that hath such means to die. Let love, being light, be drowned if she sink. What, are you mad that you do reason so? Not mad. But mated, how I do not know. It is a fault that springeth from your eye. For gazing on your beams, fair son, being by. Gaze where you should, and that will clear your sight. As good to wink, sweet love, as look on night. Why call you me love? Call my sister so. <coughs> Thy sister's sister. That's my sister. No, it is thyself, mine own self's better part, mine eye's clear eye, my dear heart's dearer heart, my food, my fortune, and my sweet hope's aim, my soul, earth's heaven, and my heaven's claim. All this my sister is, or else should be. Call thyself, sister, sweet, for I am thee. Thee will I love, and with thee lead my life. Thou hast no husband yet, nor I no wife. Give me thy hand. Oh, soft, sir, hold you still. I will fetch my sister to get her good will. Why, how now, Dromeo? Where runnest thou so fast? <laughs> Do you know me, sir? Am I Dromeo? Am I your man? Am I myself? Thou art Dromeo, thou art my man, thou art thyself. I am an ass. I am a woman's man and besides myself. What woman's man? And how besides thyself? 
Besides thyself? Mary, sir, besides myself, I am <laughs> to a woman, one that claims me, one that haunts me, one that will have me. What claim lays she to thee? Mary, sir, such a claim as you would lay to your horse, that she would have me as a beast. Not that I, being a beast, she would have me, but that she, being a very beastly creature, lays claim to me. What is she? A very reverent body, sir. I, one, such, uh, one as a man may not speak of without, he say, sir, reverence. I have but lean luck in the match, and yet she is a wondrous fat marriage. How does thou mean fat marriage? Uh, Mary, sir, that she's the kitchen wench and all grease, that I know not what use to put her to, but to make a lamp of her and run from her by her own light. I am warrant her rags and the tallows in them will burn a Poland winter. If she lives till doomsday, till she burn a week longer than the whole world. What complexion is she of? Swartz, like my shoe. But her face, <laughs> nothing half so clean, kept. For why she sweats? A man may go over shoes in the grime of it. That's a fault that water will mend. No, sir. In grain. Noah's flood could not do it. What's her name? Nell, sir. But her name and three quarters, that's an L and three quarters, will not measure her from hip to hip. And she bears some breadth. No longer from head to foot than from hip to hip. She is spherical, like a globe. I could find out countries in her. In what part of her body stands Ireland? <laughs> in her buttocks. I found Where it out here? with bogs. Where's Scotland? <laughs> I found it by barrenness, hard in the palm of the hand. <laughs> Where France? In her forehead armed and rev reveted, making war against her hair. <laughs> Where England? I looked for the chalky cliffs, but I could find no whiteness in them. But I guess it stood in her chin by the salt room that ran between France and it. Where Spain? Faith, I saw it not. But I felt it in her hot breath. Where America, the Indies? Oh, sir, upon her nose, all or embellished with rubies and carbuncles and sapphires, declining the rich aspect to the hot breath of Spain, who sent the whole amardo of Carax to be ballast at her nose. Where good Belgia, the Netherlands? Oh, sir. I did not look so low. <laughs> to conclude, this drudge or diviner laid claim to me, called me Dromeo, swore I was assured to her, told me what privy marks I had about me, as the mark of my shoulder, the mole on my neck, the great wart on my left arm. I am amazed, ran from her as a witch. And I think... If my breast had not been made of faith and my heart of steel, she'd have transformed me into a curtled dog and made me turn in the wheel. Go, hie thee presently, post to the road, and if the wind blow any way from shore, I will not harbor in this town tonight. If any bark put forth, come to the mart where I will walk till thou return to me. If everyone knows us and we know none, tis time, I think, to trudge, pack, and be gone. As from a bear, a man would run for life. So I fly from her, that would be my wife. There's none but witches to inhabit here, and therefore it is high time that I were hence. 
She that doth call me husband, even my soul doth for a wife abhor. But her fair sister, possessed with such a gentle sovereign grace, of such enchanting presence and discourse, hath almost made me traitor to myself. But, lest myself be guilty to self-wrong, I'll stop mine ears against the mermaid song. Ah, uh, Master Antipholus! Aye, that's my name. Um, I know it well, sir. Uh, lo, here's the chain. I thought you had taken you to, to have taken you at the open time. The chain unfinished made me stay this long. What is your will that I shall do with this? Oh, uh, please yourself, sir. I have made it for you. Made it for me, sir? I bespoke it not. Not once, not twice, but twenty times you have. Go home with it, and please your wife withal. And soon at supper time, I'll visit you <laughs> and receive my money for the chain. I pray you, sir, receive the money now. For fear you ne'er see chain nor money more. Ah, oh, you are a merry man, sir. I fare you well. <laughs> what should I think of this? I cannot tell. But this I think there's no man is so vain that would refuse so fair an offered chain. I see a man here needs not live by shifts, when in the streets he meets such golden gifts. <laughs> I'll to the mart, and there for Dromeo stay. If any ship put out, then straight away. Act four, a public place. You know, since cancered cost, the sum is due. And since I have not much important you, nor now I have not, but that I am bound to Persia. And I want guiders to do my voyage. Therefore, make present satisfaction, or I'll attach you by this officer. Well, even in just a sum that I do owe to you in growing it to me by Antipholus, and in the instant that I met with you, he had ha he had of me a chain. At five o'clock, I shall receive the money for the for the same. Pleaseth you walk with me down to his house. I will discharge my bond and thank you too. Uh, the labor may you save. See where he comes. While I go to the goldsmith's house, go thou and buy a rope's end that I will bestow among my wife and her confederates for locking me out of my doors by day. But soft, I see the goldsmith. Get thee gone. Buy thou a rope and bring it home to me. I buy a thousand pound a year. I buy a rope. A man is well holp up that trusts to you. I promised your presence and the chain, but neither chain nor goldsmith came to me. Belike you thought our love would last too long if it were chained together and therefore came not. Uh, saving your merry humor, there's the note how much your chain weighs to the utmost carrot. The finest of the gold and chargeful fashion, which doth amount to the three odd ducats more, then I stand debted to this gentleman. I pray you, see him presently discharged, for he is bound to stay, and stays but for it. I am not furnished with the present money. Besides, I have some business in the town. Good senor, take the stranger to my house, and with you take the chain, and bid my wife disperse the sum on the receipt thereof. Perchance I will be there as soon as you. Then you will bring the chain to her yourself? No. Bear it with you, lest I come not in time enough. Uh, well, sir, I will. Have you the chain about you? And if I have not, sir, I hope you have, or else you may return without your money. Nay, come, I repay you, sir. Give me that chain. Both wind and tide stays for this gentleman. 
and I, to blame, have held him here too long. Good Lord, you used this dalliance to excuse your breach of promise to the Porpentine. I should have chid you for not bringing it, but like a shrew, you first began to brawl. The hour seals on. I pray you, sir, dispatch. You hear how he importunes me? The chain! Why give it to my wife and fetch your money? Come, come, you know I gave it to you even now. Either send the chain or send me by some token. Fie, now you run this humor out of breath. Where's the chain? I pray you let me see it. <laughs> my business cannot brook this galleon. Good sir, say whether you'll answer me or no. If not, I'll leave him to the officer. I answer you? What should I answer you? The money that you owe me for the chain. I owe you none till I receive the chain. <laughs> you know I gave it to you a half an hour since. You gave me none. You wrong me much to say so. Oh, you wrong me more, sir, in denying it. Consider how it stands upon my credit. Well, well officer, arrest him at my fault, at my suit. And, sir, I do, and charge you that the Duke's name to money obey me. This touches me in reputation. Either consent to pay this sum to, for me, or I attach you by this officer. Consent to pay thee that I never had? Arrest me, foolish fellow, if thou darest. Here is thy fee. Arrest him, officer. I would not spare my brother in this case if he should scorn me so apparently. I do arrest you, sir. You hear the suit. I do obey thee till I give thee bail. But, sirrah, you shall buy this sport as dear as all the metal in your shop will answer. Sir, sir, I shall have law in the Ephesians. To your notorious shame, I doubt it not. Master! There is a bark of Epidamnum that stays, but to her owner comes aboard. And then, sir, she bears away. Our frottage, sir, I have conveyed aboard. And I have brought the oil, the balsamum, the aquavita. The ship is in her, the, the ship is in her trim. The merry wind blows fair from the land. They stay for naught at all, but for their owner, master, and yourself. Oh, no. A madman, why thou peevish sheep? What ship of Epidamnum stays for me? A ship you sent me to hire waftage. Thou oh, drunken slave, I sent thee for a rope and told thee to what purpose and what end. You sent me for a rope's end as soon as you sent me to the bay, sir, for a bark. I will debate this matter at more leisure and teach your ears to list me with more heed. To Adriana, villain, hide thee straight, give her this key and tell her in the desk that is covered o'er with Turkish tapestry, there is a purse of ducats. Let her send it. Tell her I'm arrested in the street and that shall bail me. Hide thee, slave, be gone, and on officer to prison till it come. To Adriana, that is where we dined, where Downswabble did claim me for her husband. She is too big, I hope, for me to compass. Thither I must, though against my will, for servants must their master's minds fulfill. Sing two, act four. Oh, Adriana, did he tempt thee so? Must thou perceive austerity in his eye that he did plead in earnest? Yea or no? Looked he red or pale, or sad or merrily? What observation madest thou in this case of his heart's meteors tilting in his face? First he denied you had in him no right. He meant he did me none, the more my spite. Then swore he that he was a stranger here. And true he swore, though yet forsworn he were. Then pleaded I for you. And what said he? That Love I begged for you, he begged of me. With what persuasion did he tempt thy love? Would words that in an honest suit might move. First he did praise my beauty, then my speech. Did speak him fair? Have patience, I beseech. 
I cannot, nor I will not, hold me still. My tongue, though not my heart, shall have his will. He is deformed, crooked, old, and seer, ill-faced, worse-bodied, shapeless everywhere, vicious, ungentle, foolish, blunt, unkind, stigmatical in making, worse than mind. Who would be jealous then of such a one? No evil lost is well when it is gone. Ah, oh, but I think him better than I say, and yet would hear in others' eyes were worse. Far from her nest the lapwing cries away. My heart prays for him, though my tongue do curse. Here, go, the desk, the purse. Sweet, now, make haste. <laughs> How hast thou lost thy breath? By running fast. Where is thy master, Dromeo? Is he well? No, he's in Tartar limbo, worse than hell. Uh -oh. A devil in an everlasting garment hath him, one whose hard heart is buttoned up with steel. A fiend, a fury, a pitiless, and a rough, a wolf, nay, worse, a fellow in all buff. A back fiend, a shoulder clapper, one that countermands the passages of alleys, creeks, and narrow lands, a hound that runs counter and yet draws dry foot well. One that before the judgment carries poor selves to hell. Why, man, what is the matter? I know not the matter. He's rested in case. What? Is he arrested? Tell me in whose suit. I know not at whose suit he is arrested well, but he's in a suit of buff which rested him. That I can tell. Will you send him, mistress, redemption, the money in his desk? Go fetch it, sister. This I wonder at, that he, unknown to me, should be in debt. Tell me, was he arrested on a band? No, not on a band, but on a stronger thing, a chain. A chain, do you not hear it ring? What, the chain? No, no, the bell. Tis time I were gone. I was two ere before I left him. Now the clock strikes one. The hours come back, that did I never hear. Oh, yes. If any hour met a sergeant, a turns back for very fear. As if time were in debt, how fondly dost thou reason? Time is very bankrupt, and owes more than he's worth to season. Nay, he's a thief too. I have not heard men say that time comes stealing on by day and night. If time be in debt and theft, and sergeant in the way, hath he not reason to turn back an hour in one day? Go, Dromeo, there's the money, bear it straight, and bring thy master home immediately. Come, sister, I am pressed down with conceit. Conceit my comfort and my injury. Same. Same. There's not a man I meet but doth salute me as if I were their well-acquainted friend. And everyone doth call me by my name. Some tender money to me, some invite me, some other give me thanks for kindnesses, some offer me commodities to buy. And even now, a tailor called me in his shop and showed me silks that he had bought for me, and therewithal took measure of my body. Sure, these are but imaginary wilds, and Lapland sorcerers inhabit here. Master, here's the gold you sent me for. What, have you got the picture of old Adam new appareled? Yes. What, what gold is this? What I'm, Adam I'm does thou mean? Right now. Yeah. Not um, I could take a break and somebody could take my part. <laughs> hey, <Lonnie. laughs> Not that Adam that kept paradise, but that Adam that kept the prison that he goes in the calf's skin that was killed for the prodigal. He that came behind you, sir, like an evil angel, and bid you forsake your liberty. I understand thee not. No? Why, tis plain case. He that went like a bas viol in a case of leather. The man, sir, that when gentlemen are tired, gives them a sob and rests them. 
he, sir, that takes pity on decayed men and gives them suits of durance, and he that sets up his rest to do more exploits with his mace than a morse pipe. What? Thou meanest an officer? I, sir, the sergeant of the band. He that brings any man to answer, it that breaks his band. One that thinks a man always going to bed and says, God give you good rest. Well, sir, there rest in your foolery. Is there any? Why, sir, I brought you word an hour since that the bark expedition put forth tonight. And then you were hindered by the sergeant to tarry for the hoy delay. Hear the angels that you've sent for to deliver you. <laughs> the fellow is distracted, and so am I. And here we wander in illusions. Some blessed power deliver us from hence. Well, mad, well mad, Master Antipolis. I see, sir, you have found a goldsmith now. Is that the chain you promised me today? Satan, avoid, I charge thee, tempt me not. Master, is this Mistress Satan? It is the, the devil. Nay, she is worse. She is the devil's dam. And here she comes in the habit of a light wench. And therefore comes that wenches say, God damn me. That's as much as to say, God make me a light wench. It is written. They appear to men like angels of light. Light is an effect of fire, and fire will burn. Ergo, light wenches will burn. Come not near her. You man and you are marvelous merry, sir. Will you go with me? We will mend our dinner here. Master, if you do, expect spoon meat, or me speak a long spoon. Why, Dromio? Mary, he must have long spoon that must eat with the devil. Why then, fiend, what tellest thou me of supping? Thou art, as you all are, a sorceress. I conjure thee to leave me and be gone. Give me the ring of mine you had at dinner, or for my diamond, the chain you promised. And I will be gone, sir, and not trouble you. Some devils ask but the parings of one's nail. A rush, a hair, a drop of blood, a pin, a nut, a cherry stone. But she, more covetous, would have a chain. Master, be wise. If you give it to her, the devil will shake her chain and fright us with it. I pray you, sir, my ring or else the chain. I hope you do not mean to cheat me so. The want, the witch. Come, Dromeo, let us go. Fly, pride, says the peacock, mistress that you know. Now, out of doubt, Antipolis is mad, else would he never so demean himself. A ring he hath of mine worth forty ducats, and for the same he promised me a chain. Both one and the other, he denies me now. The reason that I gather he is mad. Besides this present instance of his rag, rage, it's a mad tale he told today at dinner of his own doors being shut against his entrance. Be like his wife, acquainted with his fits on purpose. Shut the doors against his way. My way is now to... Hi him, hi home to his house, and tell his wife that being lunatic, he rushed into my house and took perforce my ring away. This course I fittest choose for forty ducats is too much to lose. Scene four. <laughs> <laughs>